your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy you walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. But you know what good to say? I absolutely stand up to something. I have any disrespect for you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. <laughs> I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Rumble, Rockfin. All the places where fine podcasts are sold. I'm so excited for our guest today. But before I bring him on, I got to let you guys know about some stand up dates. I'm coming to a town near you or not near you. Uh, I know you've always wanted to go to Rochester. What better time to go to Rochester, New York than the beginning of February for DabbleCon? Friday, February 3rd, and Saturday, February 4th. I'll be at Comedy at the Carlson for DabbleCon. If you're a fan or a not so much a fan of Stuttering John and the Dabble Verse. That's me. I'll be there. Uh, Anthony Cumia, Bob Levy, Carl Hamburger, all the Dabblers will be there. If you know, you know. If you don't, well, that'll be have to be a whole other episode. <laughs> VIP meet and greet, live podcast tapings, a stand up show, the Dabby Awards. Come on out. Uh, and then I'll be heading to California at the end of February, headlining in Pasadena, February 23rd at what I think is an Elks Lodge very excited for that um old men are really one of my favorite demos so i'm excited to go to pasadena and then i got a weekend in san diego uh february 24th and 25th at the mic drop comedy club then i'll be heading to dallas in may may i believe fifth and sixth first weekend of may uh, i'll be back at hyenas in dallas i don't know if tickets are available for that yet and then I'll be back in Texas for Anime Matsuri in August. The convention is from August 10th to the 13th, but I will be doing a headlining show at the Secret Group in Houston Friday, August 11th. So tickets are on sale for all of these shows. Go to chrissymayer.com. And I believe Simpcast is going to have a panel and a booth at Anime Matsuri. So we'll definitely be a presence uh, at the convention. So we can nerd out together. Yay. <laughs> also, I want to do a shout out to my t-shirt provider, flagranttriggers.com. Such a fan of these guys. You know, I got booted off of Tee Public because they didn't like my rooting for Putin design. But guess what? We have a home with flagrant triggers where you can buy <laughs> the rooting for Putin, the You Sound Vaccinated, Simpcast, Make America Great Again, Mayor Mayor, Mayor Mayor Frostbite. Filing cabinet smayer. I feel like I'll. I feel like our guest today will might enjoy the smayer shirt. You know, I think maybe two people ever have bought this shirt. <laughs> Twenty seven bucks includes shipping. Go to flagranttriggers.com. Also, you can get X Ray Girls shirts and Lila Hearts shirts on this site as well. Check it out. Woo! Cool, 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 cool. All right, I'm so excited to have this guest on today. I am a fan of his work. He is a prolific YouTuber, Twitch streamer. Uh, he is a music and alternative culture commentator. Uh, but most importantly, he's friends with Mark McGrath of Sugar Ray. Welcome to the show, Finn McKenty. I was hoping I would get your little sing song, Finn McKenty. Finn McKenty. There it is. You know, what does McKenty rhyme with? uh horn of plenty horn of plenty yeah i don't know we can work good in plenty good in there plenty, we go maybe. finn you're you're freaking crushing it dude you got two youtube channels i was impressed with i was looking at your second youtube channel i didn't realize you had a whole nother youtube channel with like quadruple the subscribers on it i got so one with a hundred thousand and one with four hundred thousand 
Woo. And you got into YouTube, what, around 2016? Uh, the end of 2017. Okay. So you're still hitting those, those golden YouTube years. Trying to. Mm -hmm. You're known as the punk rock MBA. Let me scroll your, let me scroll your things down below. There we go. Uh, on Twitter at the punk rock MBA on YouTube, the punk rock MBA and Finn McKenty PR MBA. What is, can PR you, can MBA? you say it with the, the vibrato? Twitter, the there punk rock MBA. Do I really sing that much? <laughs> Maybe I do. Just at the end of the sentence, punk rock MBA. Punk rock MBA. That's your thing. Uh, it is I like it. I just don't want to be one of those up talker girls. Mm, I, yeah. I don't want to be sound like an LA bimbo. That's or worse, like the Bay Area lecturer, you know. Now, okay, there's a few things I need you to understand. All right. <laughs> um, I think we need to do some educating, Chrissy. First of all, it's not my job to educate you. However, I will spend the next two minutes telling you what you're doing that's wrong. Exactly. We have a so you call that a Bay Area educator. Yeah, that's similar to like a Karen. It's similar to like a basic, a basic bitch. But worse, because it's there's a particular flavor of Bay Area smugness that like I can forgive the basic bitch. I can forgive the L.A. bimbo, but just the the smug Bay Area person is just nails on a chalkboard to me. Unforgivable. Have you spent a lot of time in California? Yes. Because you're from Seattle. Yeah. I, the, rainy, I, the rainy apple. I don't know. I don't know what Seattle is called. It's no. the rainy apple. That that works. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my cousins, uh, I have some cousins from like uh, Palo Alto and some other cousins from Arcadia. And so I've been Southern California. So I've and almost all my friends live in Orange County. So I've spent lots of time in California over the years. I hear that is the cool part of California now. Like my friend, uh, I have a friend from Simpcast who lives over there. And yeah, I, I've only really been to LA once at the beginning of 2020, like right as the pandemic was hitting. So I don't know if I got the best, the best sample of California, but I, that the Orange County is where I, I've heard all the based people live. I think, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> So you're from Seattle. I you have such an interesting backstory. Uh, from Seattle, you got into the hardcore and punk scene. There was that sort of your when you first fell in love with music. Uh, I first actually got into rap when I was like nine or something from MTV. Um, wow, a nine year old into rap. Yeah, like... well, you know, rap wasn't as bad back then. Um, but uh, yeah, I first got into it. Uh, through that. And then I discovered uh, this band called Suicidal Tendencies on MTV um, when I was like 12 or something. And that's kind of how I went down the rabbit hole. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, and then you started doing zines in 92. God, yep. I love the 90s. What a great yep. time to be alive. What is a zine in case we have any Gen Z people watching? <laughs> a, a zine is like a, uh, a homemade magazine, basically, since obviously this is before the Internet. So if you wanted to, uh, you know, if you wanted to get the word out about anything, like I started interviewing bands and stuff when I was like 14. And so there were like some just wow. random small punk bands and stuff like that that nobody else was writing about. And I said, well, I guess I'll do it. Um, so I'd interview them and then, you know, put it together in my parents' bedroom and go photocopy it and sold it through the mail and stuff. And I sold a few thousand copies of those by the time I was out of high school, which, you know, that's small numbers compared to YouTube. But I would actually say it was harder to sell like 5,000, you know, photocopied magazines through the mail in the 90s than it is to like get views on YouTube. So I I'm proud For of it. Sure. Yeah. It's like when I was in Girl Scouts, like it was hard to sell those cookies uh, going door to door, selling mag. I tried to sell magazines for a time. Right. Ugh. It's much harder. So how does a 14 year old get access to interview a band? Well, um, when it's like these small punk bands and stuff, they would just have like, if you buy the album, they would have like an address you could write to them. Um, and it's not like some PO box that goes to, you know, Warner brothers records or whatever. It's like the guy's house. <laughs> so I just write them a letter and say, Hey, you know, I have this fanzine. I would like to interview you. And they would write me back wow. a letter and say, okay, here's my phone number. Call me. Wow. It was like, pre this is the pre beeper era. 
Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, cool. So you did that for a couple years. Um, then you eventually you moved on after graduating. Did you study music in college? No. Okay. No, I, I went to school for marketing and management, which is wow. actually what my career has always been in. Wow, because based on your your videos, like you, I mean, you really know your shit. Like I I'm not I was into God, like this, the bands I was into were so embarrassing to even even say but like uh i had a very much like a blink 182 some 41 what's embarrassing phase. about that those bands are great <laughs> nothing embarrassing about blink or some 41 i had a strictly like only metallica phase i had a corn phase and then i got wrapped up in a friend group that was really into spice girls and we did we did spice girls for the talent show spice girls also great yeah but you like you could your content makes me think that you studied music. Like you're such a super like nerd about it, but in a good way. No, it's, I, you know, I really, I, I, I actually feel like music has always been sort of like something I didn't really pay that much attention to. Cause I've always been so focused on my career. Um, I just like all my friends are, you know, in bands. I just grew up around all of them and stuff. Um, so I just sort of absorbed it, you know, like if, uh, if your dad, um, I don't know, drives a tow truck, you know, all about tow trucks, True. even if you don't care about them, you know, not to say that I don't care about music, but I just, you know, I mean, I obviously pay attention to it, but it's, uh, you know, it's not like something I've ever really like studied in any kind of formal way. True. Like my dad was a landscaper and I know all about like different trees. Right. My dad was a corrections officer, so I know all about prison really yeah did that make you want to be like a good boy and stay out of yeah. prison <laughs> yeah and uh his twin brother actually was in prison for selling drugs it was like the plot of one of these like it's like a nicholas cage movie where he plays like the twin they look like identical like if you met my dad and his twin brother you wouldn't be able to tell him apart so it's Whoa. like a nicholas cage movie it's like one brother is uh works at the prison the other brothers behind bars and then uh during a riot they switch places <laughs> so that's your dad's brother so that's your uncle do your uncle ever try to like sneak into bed with your mom or anything like that like doing uh, any fun yeah. twin brother tricks probably i you okay. know i wasn't there to observe but probably and then i think four i my mom remarried uh and my stepdad and i want to say two of his brothers i think also went to prison cool for what drugs fun wow you would get along with gary beekler from friday night tights um also also uh went to prison uh from kevin brady finn is the man he knows his stuff and actually gave the guitarist of my band oh into yeah the i remember that some great advice for a self-release when we went independent cool to see this crossover I remember that. Oh, Kevin, thank you. Okay. So when I hear self release, I think of something that has nothing <laughs> to do with music. Get your mind out of the gutter, Chrissy. <laughs> this is a Christian show. <laughs> Just for today. <laughs> We're going to keep it clean, boys and girls. Okay. So how did you go from zines? You were a marketing major in college. You were like, I'm probably going to get a real job. You graduated, you work with a lot. You had a lot of real world experience. You worked mm -hmm. with Swiffer and for mm -hmm. Breeze. I'm just reading your Wikipedia. Yeah. Um, you work, you look like somebody who would work for Quicksilver and DC shoes. Like when I look at you, I think, I think, uh, you, that you work at Vans or something. Like yeah. Whatever the, the, the male equivalent of like basic bitch is that's that that's me, the basic Vans bitch. <laughs> There was a time where I owned like six different pairs of vans because like you they make you buy them to be an improv. They're like, you oh, is that the deal? It, it, it's kind of an understanding. Yeah. Or I feel like it's either that or the low top Chuck Taylors. Look, when I watch. Oh, uh, yes. What's her name? Taylor Tomlinson. Is that her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Taylor. Yeah, she's hilarious. I love her. I noticed she had the uh, I think she had the 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 vans. Uh, mm -hmm. Angela Johnson, Chuck Taylor. So it's one or the other. I had some, I had some of those, but they don't provide very good support. Like they're just, they're pretty flappy. Okay. So, um, my God, you worked for Abercrombie and Fitch in product mm -hmm. design. How many shirtless boys did you, 
Stop, boys. Men. Not enough. <laughs> it's uh, like my I dream designed, job. I designed t-shirts. I had two jobs there. The first one I did was uh, designing t-shirts for Hollister uh, girls, which I did for wow. a couple years. I probably designed like 500 shirts or something. Uh, oh my for that. God. So I loved Hollister. Yeah. Depending on what it, I, I did that from 2009 to 2011, I think I was doing design there. So if you were in high school at that time, very likely that I designed one of your shirts. And then I moved to a marketing role there where I, uh, the main thing I worked on was like the shopping bags. If you remember, you know, like the, the hunky guy, hunky naked guy in the shopping bag. That was your idea. It wasn't, no, no, it wasn't my idea. I just was in charge of, well, not in charge, but I'm one of the people in charge of producing them. So I spent a lot of time at shopping bag factories in China and Hong Kong and uh, Indonesia and Korea. Did they, was that pre like suicide net? Was that before those were popular? You're thinking or? of Apple. Um, okay. Only the I woke companies, everywhere. only the woke companies drive their uh, employees to suicide. Okay. Makes sense. Abercrombie well, factories, totally decent places to work same thing as american factories what i think that the kids the kids of today are like really missing out on it was an experience to walk into an abercrombie or a hollister there was a smell there was like mm -hmm. hope in the air <laughs> it was everything was like fresh and we're like oh my god youth life is ahead of me your parents There's hated it because it was here. all dark and loud yeah and yeah they're like what's like, happening I'll wait here? outside yeah, it was like you were going into like uh, someone's bedroom. It was like the lights weren't really, it was dim. Yeah. And there's just like, you're going through dim sweaters. And you're like, oh, everything smells good. And you're like, I hope there's going to be a hot boy in mm -hmm. here for me to flirt with. That's what I always said. It was exciting. It was, and now it's it was. just like. And, and I worked there at the very peak of it. So like, you know, 2009 to 2012 was when I was there, which was actually when the brand was at its, at its peak of popularity. And uh, yeah, it was a cool experience. I mean, I. It was, uh, you know, it's definitely not an easy place to work, but yeah, it was cool. I learned a lot from it. What made it, what made it a hard place to work? Uh, I mean, it's, you know, like working at the top performer in any industry is fucking hard, you know? So you work there for three years, you're going to do five years of work. Um, also a lot of the people, a lot of the people there were sort of what you would expect them to be. Um, <laughs> up, you know, up talkers. <laughs> yeah up to, you know people who uh, as, as i i remember i there's one part of the company where that's all like the people who like decide how to lay out the stores and stuff um i i was like what's up with them because they're all like really good looking but kind of stupid and difficult and i was like <laughs> what what's up with those people why are they all like that and the my coworker was like oh uh, most of them used to be store managers we don't hire them because they're nice and i was like ah yes okay <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Welcome to the working world. Yes. Okay. That's neat. So how you worked in the, I like that you worked in the, the kind of like regular corporate world mm -hmm. for, for many years before embarking on a, on a, on a YouTube, but you didn't really, it seems like you weren't, you don't really hide your, your YouTube self from your, from your, like your nine to five jobs. No. And I'm a partner in now. a company now. Um, I've been doing this since 2017 or so. I'm a part, a partner in a company, um, called Nail the Mix, where we teach people how to record and produce music. Um, we've got about like eh, like seven thousand members or something like that all over the world now. Um, and uh, yeah, at this point in my life, it's just I, you know, I am who I am, and people can take it or leave it. And uh, you know, for better or for worse, I just kind of, I just am who I am. You know. Yeah. And so, how did you get into YouTube? What well. Yeah. So, I mean, I did zines and then I did, I had a bunch of blogs and my, uh, in the two thousands after zines started, stopped kind of being relevant. And my thinking has always been like, wherever people's attention is, that's where I want to be. And it became clear to me around that time that YouTube was sort of the place to be. And I said, well, I guess I'm going to try that. So I did. And it took me about a year or so to kind of figure it out and, you know, get any kind of traction, but, uh, yeah, did end up working. Did you start right away uh, commenting on music or did you kind of like touch around on other subjects? It took me a while. I actually originally started talking about business because like that's sort of my, you know, kind of my big passion is business. But um, turns out nobody gave a shit what I had to say about business. Um, oh. So when I uh, switched to talking about music, they cared. So that's uh, kind of where I decided to focus. I'm going to pull up. Uh, your larger YouTube channel. I just love the variety of 
of kinds. Like my fiance and I discovered you. I think it was the video you did. God, it might have been one of the videos about like which songs still hold up from the 90s. Oh, okay. That's my other channel. Okay. What's the difference? I thought they were all the same. Wow. Uh, I really suck at this. No, no. I'm the one that sucks at it. If it's not clear to you, I'm the one that sucks. <laughs> Uh, so the second channel is sort of more like fun. It's all highlights from my live streams, the second channel. Uh, and so they're kind of more like fun and silly and stuff. These videos are scripted and they're sort of more like, you know, focusing on just the facts. Okay. Let me switch to your other channel. I like, not that I don't like this channel. The other one's better. <laughs> I think. Here we go. Uh, why people like screaming, why middle fans like screaming. This one's better. <laughs> it's, fun. you know, it's like, this is probably just for the, the, ever, the average bear, which is me. Um, yeah, I've been silly, having fun. Yeah. I love this video songs to show my son. So you're expecting a son. And I love this mm -hmm. because you were like, well, I'm going to expose him because we know that he's going to rebel against what I'm into. So what am I going to show him <laughs> to then have him rebel into the direction I actually want him to go right. into? I don't want him to get into art and music. I don't want him to be into like business and sports. So um, if I force him to listen to weird music that encourages him to be a loser, then hopefully he'll rebel by being like, fuck you, dad. I'm joining the football team. You can't stop me. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, anything but that. Don't do that. Like, I'll love you however you turn out. However, uh, don't be a nerd. Don't be, <laughs> exactly. don't be a loser. Exactly. And you said so many things that resonated. You were like, uh, don't be somebody who complains about rich people, like a rich person hater. Rich guy bad. Rich guy bad. I was like, that is so true because it's like it's useless. It's a useless perspective to have. Everybody on Twitter complaining about the fact that billionaires exist. It's not going to make your life any better. It doesn't make them any less rich. No, nope. it literally does nothing. Does nothing other than just waste the precious time you have on this earth, yelling into the void of all the other miserable people on Twitter that don't give a shit what you think. It's like you're you're either trying to excuse your own laziness or you literally grew up with money your family has money you because or like both you said, or both yeah or anybody who's actually been kind of poor doesn't glamorize it no it sucks my wife and i both grew up on welfare and uh it was not fucking fun <laughs> and you know it's just it's an unfortunate sort of dynamic these days is that there's so many of these i don't know it's just it's an unfortunate thing that there's so many people who um would rather they put so much energy into blaming other people or for their failures or shortcomings. And if you just put a fraction of that same mm. amount of energy into doing something, then you wouldn't be so fucking miserable. Yeah. Especially when I hear people complain about right. Not having more success. And it's like, well, you have to just find a way. Like, are you complaining more than you're figuring it out? Right. Uh, yeah. Cause I'm, I was not, cut out for to have mainstream success in comedy and once i figured out like i'm not a mainstream comic so why am i barking up the main the mainstream yep. comedy industry tree for validation for success for uh for anything really oh frank thinks you have a bit of a mark norman energy who is oh, i don't know who that is he's a very funny comic then i agree a little bit in your uh the way your voice sounds okay i agree if he's funny then i agree yeah wait say comedy comedy <laughs> there we go i also liked about your their video songs to show my son you were like don't have a, you don't want him to do weed and i i was like yes because i don't understand i've yet to meet someone who's just casually smoked right. weed. it's either it's either your entire personality and you're not getting anything else done uh or, or you don't do it yeah i don't i don't understand like why is it like but they're not they're not addicts though right Oh, like, no. I mean, yeah, I smoke weed six times a day and yeah, I talk about it all the time and I force it on everyone else, but I'm not an addict. And I've thought about all the different things that I can smoke weed out of. Right. And I'm interested in the different products, but. And I've memorized think... 500 different strains and I've like any time, like my, the, my least favorite human being on the planet is the one that if you mention you know, the, any sort of health condition, they're like, Oh, have you tried weed? You know, there's some <laughs> studies that show that blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, go ahead and uh, smoke weed to cure your cancer. Let me know how that works out. 
I will go to the doctor. Anything's possible. I mean, that it's, you know, like my mom had cancer and she she was going the kind of like alternate route. But then she kind of just basically bailed on all of it and was like, fuck it. And I feel just moved to Florida and started eating whatever and like kind of didn't care anymore. I don't all know. All I'm Every- saying is if if you, you know, if you want to, I actually, I encourage you, if you have cancer and you are thinking about smoking weed to cure your cancer, I actually encourage that because maybe we're better off with you removed from the gene pool. Oh, shit. <laughs> all right. All right. I, that's okay. It, like, try whatever you want, but yeah, the, the pushing it on other people thing. A gentle suggestion. Did, I, then... did I cross the line? No, no. Although like <laughs> you're afraid of you're afraid of offending the pot smokers in the audience. It's okay. I understand. They get very I... defensive. <laughs> like I'm not defensive. Oh, okay, I'm not okay. I you know what it is? I'm more into alternative uh I'm I'm definitely into medical freedom. I'm not I'm not like sure. yay pot smokers, but I I think that like the western medicine uh conglomerate definitely does not encourage anything that's kind of like more herbal or organic or anything that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to to pay for it to to heal you i think uh natural cures are are very much ignored in this country but True. i don't think people should be smoking weed i think at, at at best it'll make you a little bit more relaxed but at worst is is so many so many at other worst things it, that- at the worst case scenario is the most likely case scenario which is that it turns you into somebody who has made weed into their personality. Like you said, and you had nothing else done. Like right. I've to meet somebody who's really into weed and is crushing it and reaching all their goals and like building a company and uh, a lot of overlap with like the rich guy, bad people and the pot smokers. Yeah. It's this trend of kind of just like reveling in mediocrity and, yeah. and instead of like, Oh, you can't fight the power. So why try? And now it's trendy to, attach yourself to whatever victim group works best for you. I agree. Just you. go dig a hole, dig the deepest hole you can in the backyard. <laughs> just jump in. <laughs> just jump in. It's and pointless. Then pull the dirt up like a blanket. Exactly. You'll feel way better. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> what? Uh, God, you have so many good, you have so many good videos here. What do you think? This might be a difficult question, like picking a favorite child, but what do you think was the best decade overall for music? uh 2010s because that is when there was the short-lived trend of pop songs about ass eating uh <laughs> what really <laughs> for, yeah like Nicki minaj uh, anaconda it's like he tossed my salad like his name romaine and oh, the uh janae Iko song we said she says you got to eat the booty like groceries so this you is you have to th- eat it like groceries i mean you actually don't want to eat it like groceries because groceries they you take them out of the bag you unpack them it takes a long time True. It, it's more like um, tearing into like some greasy gas station pizza when you're drunk. Yes, exactly. Like a 7-Eleven rotator mm-hmm. snack. Oh, my God. You did a, a video with Ian Fidance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's I hilarious. He is so fun. <clears throat> OK, so 2010s had the best music. Um, so okay. when we learned to embrace ass eating as a culture. Yeah. And we've never looked back. Mm hmm. Which music genre has the worst fans? Uh, all of them other than country and butt rock. Um, because but butt rock, yeah, butt rock, meaning you know, like Nickelback, um, Creed, um, Hinder, that sort of thing. The only the only music fans that aren't just punishing nerds, uh, is butt rock and country. Because why is it all, called butt rock? Uh, it's because there's the stations be like. Welcome back to KSW 99.9, where we play nothing but rock. Okay. So okay, but rock. rock. That's Every funny. other genre of music, just nothing but nerds, as far as the eye can see, that take it way too seriously. It's like weed, where they turn it into their whole identity and just will not fucking let it go. Get really upset if you say anything rem- remotely critical. Make a joke about some band they liked in high school. That's not funny. <laughs> Actually... That was their fourth album. The third album. Blah, blah, blah. All right. God damn it. It's just a joke. Jesus Christ. But butt rock and country, because these are these are genres of music that normal people listen to. Nor, the, the problem is with every other genre of music, frustrated virgins with a perpetual case of blue balls. But butt rock and country, those guys fuck. 
They're not angry. <laughs> they're not mad at the world because they because because they fucking. were finger blasting the head cheerleader in high school. They're not mad at the world. So if you've been finger blasted or you are or you are doing the blasting yourself, mm -hmm. like you're going to be even keeled and not an insufferable fan. That's the key. OK. OK. <laughs> Okay. I don't know if this is I, what you were expecting. No, this but. is great. This is great. I I sometimes miss. I feel more, I feel detached from music. Like I remember the bands I was into in like middle school, high school, going into college. You have your zip around thing of CDs. You know exactly what's in there. I knew every song on the Blues Traver, Traveler album. I knew I knew every word to every song. It was like you studied them. You poured over them. You knew the the, the artwork. I would like take, take the artwork out of the CDs, bring it to art class, and I would like doodle it. Like there was so much more of an attachment and and then your music was so much more of part of who you were. And now it's like, oh, I just go onto my Spotify and I, I press play on my liked songs list. And it, and it just feels like it feels wrong. <laughs> it feels or TikTok, like you know, know, where you I don't like. even listen. You don't listen to six seconds of the song. Fuck TikTok. I know. I love it slash hate it. I will bring up TikToks on my shows all the time, but I just, I just don't like TikTok. Well, it's okay. You don't have to. It's sort of like when parents would tell me they didn't like the uh, old people would say they didn't like the Hollister store. And I'd say, well, it's okay. You're not supposed uh, to like it. And I'm being old about TikTok. I know. I know. It's okay. Just, it's okay. Because you know what? Like if you're, you're giving me similar, like Gary V energy right now, like, you know what? You got to just be where the people are and the people are on TikTok. That's right. You got to, yeah. you got to get on there. Like all the nurses um, <laughs> doing their nurse dance. That's what I should do is I should buy some scrubs and pretend to be a nurse and just do like, like disgusting wrong dances and be like, Oh my God, what hospital does she work at? She needs to be fired. <laughs> You're like dancing with uh, you know, some corpse on a, on a gurney. Yeah. I'll do my own coffin dance. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Uncle Sam, I am about to finish my MBA only has two B's. I smoke daily and hourly. Rut row. I am a homesteader and there are more benefits to cannabis than big pharma. Not just smoking, just giving another viewpoint. I would say, yeah, I would say I would support smoking weed rather than I need to have big pharma anti-anxiety pill daily. I, I think everyone should take antidepressants just to be safe. Just buy like get a candy dish of antidepressants, put them on the on Trick the coffee treat. table. Just take a few here and there, even if you feel fine. It's the only way to be safe. Ugh, I got prescribed an anti-anxiety medicine with my Adderall. And I was like, why? I was like, why was this a <laughs> rich two man for one? speedball? I don't like it. I didn't like it. I never I never uh, I never took it. I just like kept it in my desk at work. Um, OK, let's see. I asked about that. Okay. What are your favorite kind of videos to make? My favorite kind of videos to make are the ones like that you talked about, you know, songs that didn't hold up or whatever. Just, I like having fun. I like being silly and having fun. Uh, yeah. Those are my favorite ones. Okay. This is probably similar to the fan question, but um, what types of videos do you get the most like criticism or blowback for, or what types of criticism do you feel like people come for you on? So here's, here's my, uh, here's my, my academic framework for this. What I talked about earlier, my, uh, theory is that the less, um, the less like social currency, a group of people has online or sorry, in real life, the more butthurt and aggressive they are online. So, wow. if I, okay. so if I ever make fun of nerdy shit, like ska, you know, or whatever, all these like random obscure bands that nobody actually listens to. That's what people get mad about. Uh, so yeah, any, anything, anytime I make a joke about some nerdy band that uh, virgins liked in high school, that tends to set people off. Okay. <laughs> Frank listens to butt rock while squeezing through a super butt funnel. Wow. Good plan. All right. I probably shouldn't have should have read that first before just throwing it up on the screen <laughs> willy-nilly um okay finn spends this is a question from frank which i thought okay. was great uh finn spends many videos defending alleged sellouts and in industry plants like avril lavigne who in his opinion are examples of rock industry plant who in your opinion are examples of rock industry plants and sellouts i guess other than avril lavigne 
Uh, I mean, I, that's like just so opposed to the way that I think that it's hard for me. Like, I've never called someone a sellout in my life, and I never would because, like, the idea of not taking the chance to make money is insane to me. So I just, I, I, I just don't understand that. Like, if someone offers me money to do what I do, like make music or make video, like I don't, I don't understand. That's like that's my job. So I just don't really see things that way. It's hard for me to say. I think it assumes that the presence of money or the presence of an opportunity that leads to more money will inherently change your music no matter yes. what. Yeah. Well, I, I hate to break it to everyone, but all the bands that you loved that started making shitty butt rock albums, it's because the people in the band have bad ideas. It's not because there's like some shady guy, you know, behind the scenes smoking a cigar like, now here's what you're going to do, boys. Like there's no conspiracy. Your band, the band you like just started to suck. Hmm. You know, it's so like you don't it, you wouldn't it, it, correlate it with opportunity or with money. I mean, that there are maybe in some cases, but like, have you ever tried to tell a musician what to do? No, it's like hurting cats. Not going to happen. It's like telling a comedian to like change their material. It's not going to happen. You True. know, they're not going to do it. No matter how much money there is involved, they're not going to do it. So I, I just don't really I don't, I don't think that like selling out, I don't really think it happens really um mm, okay you know i mean i guess it yeah i think there's lots of examples of people being kind of hypocritical i mean rage against the machine is a good example of that of like they're talking about how awful you know um every corporation is and meanwhile they're you know signed to a major label and rah, rah, rah. And of course they have their rationalization as to why that's okay whatever do what you want i don't give a shit I think with what people are really upset about with Rage Against Machine is like they are they seem to be pandering and in lockstep with with corporatism with like big government. It's Democrat uh, rock. Because yeah, <laughs> instead of like, well, your it's name fine. is literally Rage Against the Machine. You are now raging yeah. with the machine. Does that have to do with money or just sort of pandering and wanting to be in the good graces? Yeah, of it's that. People? It's because they want all the people who drive their Subarus with a coexist sticker on the back to Trader Joe's you know, to give them a high five and tell them how great and smart they are. So you wouldn't say there's necessarily selling out going on, but maybe compromising of original values. Do you think, but then you look at Howard Stern, like he, he compromised his original values with the more money he made. Yeah. But it's I mean, hard I, I can't, I can't speculate about what people's internal state is or what their motives are. And to be honest, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Like if someone sells out, I don't care whatever right you're like do what do what you're gonna do because it's not like we have an alternate version of this band or this person where they don't right go and down I, that I'm, path i'm totally not invested in policing what other people choose to do with themselves and their career and stuff like i don't give a fuck you know if right, you like, want to if you want to go pander go pander i don't give a shit i'm just gonna not pay attention that's fair yeah it's like let you know do what you're gonna do and if you're finding yourself getting so upset about that, it's like, okay, you probably need another hobby. Touch grass or better yet, touch a tit. And I say touch a tit because let's remember, it is really only men that act like this. You think? Nerdy men ruin everything. It's a fact. What about cunty women? You know, What's worse? perhaps I, perhaps it's only because I don't interact with them. Um, you know, perhaps it's only because my fan base is like, you know, 95 percent men that, uh, you know, maybe maybe they're ruining it for everyone. I don't know. I mean, women certainly have their moments, but I feel like for me personally, like nerdy male energy is just so aggravating. It's like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like the soy jack memes, you know, of like the guy with the the guy with the scraggly beard and the glasses, you know, if you have you seen the one of like the uh, my wife's boyfriend bought me a Nintendo <laughs> switch like that one. <laughs> yeah. It's like that kind of energy just, it just makes me want to bully them. It makes me want to stuff them in a locker and take their lunch money and throw their Nintendo switch in the fucking trash. So yeah. Like 28 the... years old, put away the goddamn Pokemon. Oh, what about Pokemon go? It's so fun. I played it all through the pandemic. Chrissy. It's time to let it go. No, you're about it's... to be a stepmom. It's going to be Mudkip day soon. <laughs> 
Okay, we'll talk about this another time. I think you can enjoy things without them. Right. You don't want them to take you want your you don't want your little niche interests but, but to listen, take over your whole life and take time away from like crushing it, making money, exactly. building a business, make, getting your goals. Having a family. Yeah. Things like that. You know, that's and this is the problem. See that the thing with the nerdy men is the reason why I have to have like a hardline stance on this is because they're like children. Um, where if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Like if I say it's okay for you to play Pokemon here and there, well, next thing I know, I'm going to walk into your room and I'm going to find out you've been watching, you as a 32-year-old man have been watching, you know, Pokemon lore videos on YouTube for three hours. And we're like, <laughs> Mark, we talked about this. I think when you're a huge fan of something, uh, there are certain types of fans, right? Nerds, whatever. They're just basically very into what they're into. They have yeah. a lot of knowledge. And then when they see a remake of a movie or a new album or whatever come out. Oh, this is different. This is different than the original. This is yeah. different. They're not respecting the lore. It's just they, especially with men, like whereas females are more like, Oh, I'm good. go with the flow. And maybe they're less into like yeah. nerd culture than guys. It's just inherent that they would speak out about it. Like, Hey, this is not They're They're, they're not respecting the, the original story, the oh, original no. character. They've, but they they're ruined just my little pony. <laughs> oh man. You're just, you're like, get over it. You're like, suck it up, guys. Yeah, uh, I mean, basically, I mean, I just, I think it's like, honestly, the, and I should be clear, the reason why I have so much energy for this is because I could have been one of them. Um, Because, you know, okay. when I was 23 or something, I like, and I had no money when I was 23, yet I somehow managed to like spend hundreds of dollars a month on collecting fucking video games. And it's just like, how fucking sad is that? And, you know, no wonder my girlfriend at the time left me because like, who we wants spending to spending it with... on her? Yeah. And like paying more attention to collecting my goddamn games than to like doing something with her. Like, I don't think I ever like I never once like actually took her on a date, you know, like after we were like together, like I would sort of begrudgingly go do something for her birthday or something like that. Oh, like I didn't no. want to. Well, you know? I don't think that had anything to do with your collections. You know, I, I think that just you were not aware of of her wants and needs. And maybe there was enough communication. I don't think that I don't think blaming your hobbies is is fair. No, but there. It, it, it's reflective. The reason it's reflective of this overall kind of trend of um, of of culture, encouraging men to be self-centered children who like over index on their hobbies. Like where are the people in, where are the people in culture telling you like, uh, you know, to like get over yourself, grow up, be a man and, you know, think about other people. Uh, it, it happened like, I mean, their country songs talk about that, but like, that's it where there's no like mainstream movies or TV shows or, you know, uh, mainstream music aside from country talking about this. Like it's not, a thing in culture. And I, it's like, I, I think it's terrible, not only because like, I find it irritating, but because I think it, it's like genuinely harmful. Like you don't want to be 36 years old, you know, and still operating like a 19 year old. And that's true. Jordan Peterson talks a lot about that. Just nobody likes a, a grown up infant. It's, right. it's not useful. Like no, no woman of quality wants to be with a guy like that. They'll put up like women don't uh, oftentimes don't know any better when they're like 20, you know? Um, but, uh, they're going to realize very quickly as many girls realized with me back then, you know, they're going to realize, uh, yeah, they're going to realize what it is. And they're gonna be like, fuck this shit. I'm not getting any younger time to move on. I think it's okay to have interests, right? But don't let it take up so much time, sure. space, money that it affects your other goals. Like if you really want to have a family, okay, like, yeah, just look at where your money is going and if that's in line with your goals. Uh, and and, like and if you don't want to have a family, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but it's like, I'm, I'm just tired of all the coddling. I'm tired of everybody being like encouraged. It's like, no, Star Wars is for fucking children. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a fucking it's like as patrick willem mm -hmm. says star wars is a movie about space wizards for children okay it's <laughs> also sorry. a huge part of american culture it's it's if it's you want to go watch star wars cool but like don't have opinions like i've watched every star wars movie i think they're fine you know but it's just like i mean i shouldn't i shouldn't say any of these things you should you should say it say all the things I, I feel like you're encouraging me to dig myself deeper. 
No, it's okay. I think it's funny because I stream with and are friends with so many people that are so, so, so into it. And I'm like, I'm just like a slightly into it. You know, I'm not, I'm not a like mega nerd uh, on all just these things, any, but I understand any, these people. Any man who is like super into like fucking comic books and Star Wars and metal and whatever else. Um, and you think it's normal because you're only around other men like this. Go spend some time in the presence of like actual adult men. You know, go go hang out with some cops or something like that. And like, see if you don't feel a little bit silly. Be like, hey, you want to go? You want to go put your knee on? All right, next guy we arrest, you could put <laughs> you could put your knee on their neck. <laughs> want to? Hey, but uh, want want to see my collection of rare Pokemon cards? Ka kind like, of. Oh, gosh, I'd love to, but I need to get home <laughs> to my wife and children. They're really rare. This is a shiny one. Okay. Look at my mudkips. <laughs> I think it's funny. Uh, okay. I feel like I'm making you uncomfortable. I feel like no, it's I, I get it because there is a I I definitely understand and agree with part of what you're saying. There, you don't want to, and you don't want your and uh, a, a hobby to become something that takes over your life to the point where you can't get anything else done. It could be sports and, and, fandom too, by the way. It's yeah. not just nerdy shit. I'm just particularly sensitive to that because that's what I'm around. But it's the same thing as like guys that know the fucking batting average of, you know, everyone on the fucking 2002, you know, New York Yankees, uh, but they haven't touched a tit in two years or whatever, or their wife is on the verge of leaving them because like you haven't paid attention to her. I mean, it's like, it, it's just like a classic male thing of like over indexing on like basically self-centered shit that doesn't actually matter. True. But throwing yourself into movies, comics, et cetera, nerd culture can be a thing that gets you through a really hard time. Maybe a really hard divorce. True. Maybe that keeps you from ODing on fentanyl. You know, it can, <laughs> it's, it's a relatively if, healthy. If you're sitting time. here, if you're sitting <laughs> here like cold sweat running down your face and on the one hand, over here, you've got your Nintendo Switch. And on the other hand, you've got a uh, crack pipe. I would encourage you to reach for the Switch if those are the choices. Right. <laughs> if it's if it's uh, Roblox or fentanyl. yeah. Go with Roblox. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the MAGA rappers that have uh, gotten a lot better? like a lot more popularity over the last couple of years, like Tom McDonald, Bryson Gray, Forgiato Blow. Um, do you, do you feel like it's beneficial to be counterculture or is there a line when you think it's considered too much politics in music? A lot of objectionable facial hair. That's my real issue. They okay. all, I'm, I'm going to get my, can get myself canceled for saying, no, this, I think, I, I, I think I, I no, just... what I'm about to say is, is this is so bad, but I'm just going to say it. Okay. I think it's Forgiato Blow. One of yeah. them, I was like, he looks like a trans man because he has this like really, really awkward beard that's like, it's just, it's so strange. It's just this it's, weird beard. It's unique. It Tom shows McDonald's off his... got his like shitty fake Travis Scott braids. Um, I'm just, you I'm don't offended. Like this? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, that's, that's it. His Abraham Lincoln trans man beard. It's strange. You don't like a facial hair that looks like a Tetris game? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I feel like a square of hair is going to like creep down from the front and I have to move it into the right compartment. Is that, dun, is, dun, is, dun, is that a Bitcoin B on his face or is that? Yes. Like... <laughs> <I think> it's, <sighs> it's... Listen, if I got to choose between this. Like, why are men like this? Why his why face are tells a story? Why are always <laughs> why it, the, what the story it tells is that men are always awful and cringe. Why are we <laughs> like this? Why? Why can't we just be normal? He wants everyone to know that he's a little bit dangerous. Why can't we just be normal? Why? <laughs> and I, I I count myself as one of them. I'm awful. Every I, I'm terrible. What is no, wrong? No, he's men? a great guy. He Forgiato Blow is a great guy. He was just on the show last week. He's a, he is an entrepreneurial genius, basically. I believe it. These guys are putting uh, he's a up mega numbers. hustler. Yeah, their very music talented. Is bad. Their music he's is bad. Collabed with Vanilla Ice. I love Vanilla Ice. I want to be friends Ross. with Vanilla Ice. I love his Home Improvement show. <laughs> he knows the man knows his shit. There was one where he's uh, they're doing they're like putting in some trees in front of a house. And like one of the palm trees is like dying and they're like, oh, we're going to have to pull it out. And he's like, no, no, no. It's this type of a palm tree. 
It just needs this kind of soil and this sort of sun exposure. If we put it over here, it'll be fine. I'm like, how the fuck does vanilla ice know this much about palm trees? Um, hmm. the, the MAGA wrap stuff. Um, here's, here's my thing. Um, I don't disagree with most of the things they're saying. It's just like the way they say it is just so cringe, you know? Really? In my That's opinion. Like of, what you think it's too blatant or too obviously what, what their theme is. Or yeah. What it's just, about. it's very on the nose. It's like, whatever, who is it that has the let's go Brandon rap song? Uh, I think so, that's Bryson and Forgiato. Yeah, it's so cringe. Like, okay, come on, guys. I get it. But edgy, like, though. I'm just I'm so exhausted by edgy. I mean, I'll tell you what's I'll tell you what is cooler than being edgy is being mild and basic. That's why I like pop country is my favorite genre of music. Like uh, there's the songs like uh, find a girl who loves her daddy and talking about babies makes her happy. Like, that's my kind of message. Uh, that. That's cringe, kind of. No, no, it's not cringe. Being basic. I'm triggered by the loving your dad part. That's that's <laughs> exactly. I'm out of that. course you are, because you're a comedian <laughs> and all comedians <laughs> are tragically dysfunctional people. <laughs> all of them. All right. Yeah, you're like Normcore. You're like you're like Gap in the uh, yes. in the late 90s. Exactly. You're exactly. Mr. Old Navy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I think that's what's happening culturally. The norm is going to be edgy again. Exactly. We're so they... tired of seeing the same blue mohawk tattooed yes. Pierce barista. Like that's so done. All of it. Anything edgy. It's just, it's, it's done on whether you're like woke or MAGA. It's all the same shit to me. Like just um, calm down with the like, you know, edgy, intense opinions and shit. Just hmm. if you want to, I'll tell you who nobody likes the real rebel, the real rebels, Who's just that? the yeah. normal middle of the road, suburban people that go to Panera, you know, and drive their, their Camry and don't have too many strong opinions about anything. Everyone's like, pick a side. What do you stand for? Like, uh, I stand for, uh, going home to, see my kids and uh you know maybe watch some seinfeld reruns mm -hmm. you're like i just want to have grilled cheese and a tomato soup like that's panera energy exactly but not nothing too spicy though okay so you like more nuanced lyrics i think why the mega rappers are so blatant and obvious with their message is because a lot of them have been nearly all of them have been so so censored that's that true. they that it's the only place where they can actually get a message out and so many of the topics that they discuss and bring up in their music are also heavily censored so it's not just really a song it's kind of like it's news and it's true. they want to they want to catch people they want to wake people up um I just wish their music was better because, you know, like I said, mm -hmm. I've been listening to rap pretty much my whole life. Um, a lot of their music is really not great. Um, the, what's the one guy that uh, the fuck is the guy's name? He has like a, a Senegalese girlfriend. What's his name? He has the uh, fuck. What is the name of it? It's the Trapper song. Uh, what the fuck is um, Bless? Trapper what's Keeper? his name? What's that? Trapper Keeper? Country Trapper. Is that what it is? Um, oh, I, th I think see. it's I think this is the guy. Sounds familiar. He's kind of jacked, has like a red beard. JP Sears? No. No, 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 no. Um, no, oh, he's funny though. Yes, country trapper. How have I never what's this guy's name? Bez Believe. Yes, he's he's trapper. pretty good. He actually has a song that's very um nuanced, uh, which I really like. It's called uh, I think it's called Love Trump's Hate. And it's it's actually the best song in this genre that I've heard. The chorus is like um, Trump, something like Trump was an asshole, but he was a damn good president. And I was like, I, I, I can appreciate this. It's not I, I'm, I'm tired of people pandering like to either extreme. Um, and, OK, you know, so basically the song is like, yeah, Trump was kind of a dick, but I feel like people, you know, judged him for his personality more so than his policy, which I think is is a pretty nuanced and accurate take. So I like that guy. Okay, so if there was a more nuanced, possibly better version of of MAGA rap, you might give it another shot. Oh, I I, I listen to I, I it's one of my favorite genres to cringe at because it's just oh. 
cringe. Like I love it, but I cringe. At, like it's, I don't know. It's just there's something about. It. I just love how angry it makes people. So it's kind of fun from that respect. Um, but uh, definitely they need a they need a makeover. Like Forgiato Blow and his. Uh, there's one of his videos where he's wearing his like his Air Force PT outfit. And, like, um, listen, hey, respect. You don't the like Air the Force. little out. You don't like the outfits. My it's grandpa was in the. Culture. My grand. My grandpa was a bomber pilot in the Air Force. Respect to the Air Force, but uh, you know, I don't think anybody would say the PT clothes. If you got, if you could pick anything to wear in your video, the Air Force PT sweatsuit would not be my first choice. Okay. They got to work on their uh, their aesthetics a bit. Okay. These are my friends you're talking about. <laughs> hey, <laughs> listen, okay. I call it like this. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate it. No, it's funny. Um, I I know I like their stuff. Right. Is it is it what I choose to listen to when I wanna feel like a lot of times my music choice is like how I wanna feel and like I'll choose a song or a band because they will get me there. A lot of times I'll be like, oh, I want to know what they're doing. They're they're people I know and work with. Like, oh, yeah, I'm, I always know what their latest thing is to come out. And it's more like, ooh, they're saying that. Like, that's why I listen to them, yeah. to see what they're saying, rather than, like, I'm listening it because it's good music. But I'm not a huge rap person, so what the hell do I know? Well, what if I got a tattoo on my face of Forgiato Blow with all of his tattoos? It's like up what here. If what if you got a tattoo of your face of just like you and your family? So it was like edgy, but also normal. Mm. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's a good idea. You yeah. know, anytime someone has a tattoo uh, on their body somewhere of like a date, you know, that there's some sort of like really like melodramatic story about it. Something happened. Yeah. yeah. Why do you remember something bad on your body? I never understand why people get like tribute tattoos or like heads tattooed on them. And like, Dates, I just like I want to get some deaths. date and be like yeah. uh someone will be like, oh, what's uh you know April 13th, 1993? What's that all about? And be like, Yeah, I don't know. Well, it turns out it's Norm McDonald's birthday, and uh I was never really a fan of his, but I just figured, you know, why not? It was 50% off day at the tattoo yeah. place, so I, I just went for it. <laughs> I, I worked with a guy who had a tattoo of like um like a really nice tattoo of like a dog on his arm. And uh, I was like, oh, is uh, is that your dog? And he's like, well, yeah, it, it was. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, what happened? And he said, well, we had to move, and the new place we we're moving to didn't allow pets, so we had her put down. And I was like, what? That's horrible. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, right. It's like, I, oh, my God, that's like the worst thing ever. So you just fucking killed your dog? That's like, oh, we're going on vacation. They wouldn't let us bring kids. So, you know, yeah, we did well, what we had to do. Right. <laughs> it's nice knowing you. That's so fucked. Okay. Fuck, Mary, kill, Nickelback, All American Rejects, and Hoobastank. Oh, well, I mean, obviously you're going to fuck All American Rejects because uh, what's his name? Tyson Ritter. Is that his name? Gorgeous man. Beautiful man. If you can pull him up, we got to take a look. Okay, Just gotta, we got to take a look here. Beautiful man. Oh. Oh God! What picture do I even pick? Uh, all right, I'll do I know this it's hard to picture. choose, isn't it? It He's really so gorgeous. is. <laughs> How do you pick okay, just let's, one? Let's pull this up. I should have got these up in advance. Okay. I mean, which, he's the guy. Which of the, these is supposed to be beautiful? The guy in the uh, in the red shirt. I don't know if that's the best this picture. This is the one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe this not guy. The best if, if he didn't have the ear spacers in, I could say this guy could work could at Abercrombie it. or Hollister. Maybe, maybe I'd have to see him yeah. without his shirt on. You know, that's oh, uh, of course, yeah. I, I got to see that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I would obviously, I would f um all American rejects. That's an easy one. Okay. Um, Mary, well, I, I look. Uh, Chad Kroger seems like a lovely guy, but um, his uh, track record with marriage. You know, is he husband material? I don't know. I mean, if if Aver if he couldn't keep Avril Lavigne. And she seems like a lovely person. She's uh, engaged to my friend Maud's son. Um, oh. So I, I feel like if things didn't work out with Avril, that's probably Chad's fault. So Chad, mm -hmm. I hope you've grown from that experience. But for that reason, uh, I would choose to kill Nickelback, although I do like Nickelback. Nothing personal, Chad, but that's just how it is. Someone had to be killed. It's you. So I would I would marry Hoobastank. Look at this photograph. I'm I am I'm looking at it. <laughs> is there something specific you wanted me to look at, Chad, or is it just 
<laughs> Just looking at it. It looks okay, good. Okay, let's let's get a visual now on Hoobastank so people can be reminded of what they were working with. Oh, there's not. Wow. Okay, Hoobastank, not, not great. Well, listen, sometimes, you know, the one that you want to marry, you got to make some compromises here. And, uh, you know, someone who's husband material. Oh, got uh, this is the uh, the the ninth grade substitute English teacher starter pack right here. Oh, my God. This guy with the hoodie looks like my friend Fealty. That's so nuts. Look, uh, I'm Mr. Jacobs. I'll be your substitute teacher today. Um, can anyone <laughs> tell you guys, tell me what you guys uh, covered on Friday when uh, Mrs. Mayor was out? This is Bizarro Tom Green right here. Uh, yep. And he's the substitute teacher. Wow. Okay, so Hoobastank, you would... Marry. Marry. Nickelback, you would kill. And All yep. American Rejects, you would fuck. Okay. Yep. Yeah, these look wholesome, like wholesome boys. Yeah. You know, and maybe maybe there's another guy that catches your eye. You're walking down the aisle at Whole Foods, you know, with your husband. And, you know, you just, you see, you, you, you someone else catches your eye. And you just, you just catch, you, and you got to stop yourself and say, no, I've made my choice. Yeah, none of these guys look like they would cheat on their wife. No, no, absolutely not. Although, from what I understand, Hoobastank, the origin or the name, I think has some sort of like kind of gross origin of like pussy related something or boobies Hoobastank? or something. I don't know. Oh, oh, it's like a, got a bad slang. Something like that, I think. You can look it look up. That. Jamie, pull that shit up. Jamie, pull it up. Urban Dictionary, Hoobastank. Um, oh dear. Okay. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> so maybe, maybe they had us fooled. Maybe not husband material after all. When you are having sex doggy style and all of a sudden you smell mm. something. If one of the people had not wiped themselves very well, that smell is hooba stink. It is so, not a good smell. Lance but added stink. <laughs> in 2005. <laughs> Thank, you, Lance. Thank you, Lance. Good to know. Oh, are there additional no just that and also of course uh an extremely wow it's in <laughs> the urban Clarissa. dictionary as an extremely mediocre band i've listened to all of my good music and i don't want to listen to bad music so i'll listen to hooba stink look her up on linkedin i always wonder like how many people you know uh what are these people doing 15 years 15 years later you know she's like some you know director of marketing at a startup or something like that i want to just message them on linkedin and be like Clarissa, have you changed your opinion on Hoobastank? <laughs> what band, from your knowledge, were the biggest assholes and which were the greatest to their fans? Well, uh, I mean, Anthony Kiedis uh, from Red Hot Chili Peppers wrote in his autobiography about um, effing and kidnapping a 14-year-old. Um, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith married, I want to say, a 15-year-old. Um, and also oh uh and, and How did was, I miss all of these? And was um and both of them talked about this in their autobiography, so it's not like a secret. Um and uh so I mean that's that's pretty that's pretty bad. Uh that's pretty hoobastank. <laughs> that's not good. It's very hoobastank of you. Um, <laughs> what was the second half of your question? Uh who was who was the greatest to their fans? Which band the greatest the to their fans? Um the greatest to their fans. Um, well, I mean, you gotta you gotta put Nickelback on the top of the list of greatest to their fans because I mean they they blessed us with so many great songs. How could we ever repay them for it? Just by existing, they were good to us. Exactly. I mean, just Chad has those kind eyes. You know, is he husband material? Maybe not, but he just has those kind eyes. Okay. Oh, we did that with the F. Mary Kill. That was good. Uh, yep. Gene Sims Simmons is a big sellout. Oh, this was part of the sellout. I love Gene Simmons because he is such an unapologetic fucking asshole. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Like, go watch like Gene Simmons. Like, uh, Evan Carmichael has a video of like Gene Simmons quotes, and he is my spirit animal. I love every word out of that man's mouth because he is oh, just wow. an unapologetic, money grubbing fucking dick. <laughs> and it's great. Okay, cool. Oh, Douglas thinks that Metallica admitted they were sellouts. Selling out every arena every night. That's what they said. Wait, wait, hold on. Oh, God. Hold on. Hold on. Say that again. Selling wait, Metallica, out. <laughs> Metallica admitted they were sellouts. 
selling out every arena every night. <laughs> That's actually what they said. <laughs> wow. So they unapologetic. They're like, what are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? We're still going to be Metallica. That's right. Daniel Jagger, uh, call me charisma to hell with Hollywood is worth a listen. Call me charisma. Okay. And I don't know who that is. Daniel, thanks for the, thank you for the super chat. This is, I'm doing your job here, Chrissy. You're supposed to say thank you. <sighs> right. Thank you, Daniel, Spe for the super speaking chat. Of people who are good to their fans, not you. Ah. Uh Thank God I'm here. Oh my God. <laughs> to school me. <laughs> Daniel Jager, thank you for the super chat. Finn, are we in a post genre era of music with all the experimentation, like the SoundCloud pop punk you talk about? By the way, have you both heard of Bimbo Core? No, but I would like to. Uh, look up um, Cash Rena on YouTube. Cash Rena? She has a song, uh, y Y2K Queen by Cash Rena. Okay. Okay. Cash Rena, one word. Yeah. I would say yeah. she is like, uh, I don't know if she refers to herself as Bimbo Core or not, um, but very advanced stuff. I'm a big fan of hers. Wow. Okay. She's hilarious. Cash Rena. Well, how would you describe Bimbo Core? Well, um, I mean, it's basically sort of leaning into the idea of being like a, uh, you know, like like a hoe from 2004. OK, you know, leaning into that persona, <laughs> a thought, a Y2K thought. OK, 2004 was a great year to be a hoe. I, I wouldn't know, but it sure seems like it. The low rise jeans. Yeah. Whale tail skunk hair. Timeless yep. aesthetic. A lot of eyeliner. Mm -hmm. These were great years. Okay. 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 Good. Do we feel like we answered this? Okay. Post genre era of music. I, yes. I think we are genres. Nobody cares about genres anymore. Just make whatever you want to make. I don't think people care about genres anymore. You can do whatever you want as an artist. So I, yeah, I, I, I definitely think we're in that era. Hmm. Okay, cool. Kevin Brady, thank you for the super chat. Wow, I'm going to thank everybody now. Finn is correct. Conservatives are terrible at building culture and art. Lyrics are typically cringe. If you don't believe me, look up DC Talk. <gasps> oh, God. This is, Conservatives it, are trying. They're trying to make art. Prepare. I know. Listen, I, I, wish, I wish we were better at it, but it's just a fact. It's true. Unfortunately, the liberals are much better at building culture and art. I wish it wasn't true, Why? but it is. We got to level that? up, my friends. We got to level up. But why are they better? Why have they been better? I don't know, but we've ceded this ground to them. Ugh. It's got to stop. I mean, okay. DC talk, you got to be ready to cringe at that. That's like 90s Christian rap. Um, it's it's as bad. It's worse than you think. What's a good song by them? Let's see. None. Uh, none. They're awful. I'm so hesitant to play a lot of music because I get copyright struck all the time. Yeah, it happens. How do you, you get around it, that? But... You're constantly playing. <clears throat> so uh, I don't do live streams on YouTube. I only do them on Twitch. Um, it's not really a problem on Twitch. Um, on YouTube, I only use like five or six seconds at a time, and it's typically okay. It does happen. I do occasionally get claimed, but not very often. Okay. That's good. Um I feel like there's a bit of an 80s music and aesthetic revival happening right now. I, I don't know if I want to primarily blame uh, Stranger Things for that, but mm -hmm. it's just, I don't know if it's just our time for our nostalgia to be taken advantage of and hoard out for our own <laughs> purchase. But um, I wonder, what, what do you think is the effect of like TikTok and Netflix yeah on music and musical trends and revivals, are they kind of leading the way now since there's no kind of, not everyone's watching the same movies anymore. And not everyone's yeah. watching like more. I, I feel like more people are watching the same TV shows rather than the same movies. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it's, um, it's very interesting to see how much TikTok and Netflix 
have brought back just kind of the most random, unexpected old songs. I mean, some of them aren't random. Like, you know, there was the Metallica had a moment with, you know, Master of Puppets being in Stranger Things, but a lot of stuff that's like much less expected, like the Kate Bush song Running Up That Hill, which, you know, was not really, I mean, it was like a minor hit in the 80s or something, but, you know, that and Fleetwood Mac and blah, blah, blah. There's tons of examples of this. I can't think of other stuff top of my head, but um or there's a like depeche mode i think has a song in um uh the last of us that just came out that's like getting big on tiktok again so it is interesting um to see like you know 15 year olds rediscovering songs from like the 80s um that are like i mean that's like their parents music um kind yeah. of interesting because like when i was 15 the last fucking thing i wanted to do was like listen to anything my parents liked yeah i can't imagine like handing frank sung my ace of bass cd or like my <laughs> blues traveler cd He's like enjoy little buddy <laughs> that's right yeah well hey the time will come of who but it's we i could see ace of bass actually you know blues traveler is a bit of a stretch but i could see the zoomers getting into ace of bass um because it has that like really kind of i mean they love spice girls you know so it has that same kind of quality True. Actually, uh, that all that she wants is kind of about trad wife life. All that she wants is another baby. Hmm. But she's gone tomorrow. She's just gonna steal your seed and move off. <laughs> move <that's>, on. <sighs> They're always doing that. They're always stealing my seed. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> oh, bitches! That's, I've bad. given woman. I gave you the most precious gift. A man can provide, and you wasted it by going pee after we fucked, and it yeah. just fell out in the toilet. Is this is this how little you think of me and my seed? Yeah, you're just gonna swallow it like a Gatorade Zero after a after a soccer game. Right. What? I f frankly, I'm shocked, disappointed, and I see you in a totally different light. <laughs> I don't know. I think spitting is more offensive than than swallowing. I, it's it's true it's valid nobody That's has valid. no one no one can have it then i don't know i, I don't know how we got here okay how did you become I, I, friends i'm with gonna Mark overshare McGrath? here but i always okay. I, I always tell my wife i call it my seed and she hates it so much <laughs> it's like yeah, do you want me to seed. give you my seed and she's like Shut <laughs> the fuck up. why do you say weird shit like that because it gives it importance like seed is like important it's a it's a seed exactly. or something like now you have to take it more seriously yeah exactly she's just trying to avoid the responsibility yeah she's like look not every blast has to be your seed oh oh is that is that how you see it really okay <laughs> really well that's how this country got into the place it's in <laughs> right people women not respecting seed <laughs> exactly and then being like oh no i can't have a baby it's like you had a lot of seed I gave you my seed and you squandered it. <laughs> you seed squanderer. How did you become friends with Mark McGrath? Well, it's actually a really, uh, it's a great story. Um, uh, not actually, it's a great story. I just, uh, I, I tweeted at him. I said, hey, Mark, happy new year. Um, can I tell people that we are friends? Please respond. And then the next day he said, Yes, Finn, you can tell people we're friends because we are friends. That was your first and only interaction? I mean, technically, yes. Wow. You know, in, in my mind, I felt like there was a deeper relationship there. You know, did that relationship reflect, you know, our actual real life interactions? Technically, no. But in my in my mind and more importantly, in my heart, it was there. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Did I ask you which of your videos got the most criticism or which which of your videos do people tend to like the most or you get the most engagement on? Uh, the videos where I say good things about nerdy music, people like those. The ones where I make fun of nerdy music, people get angry. So okay. when I make fun of ska, black metal, anything like that, they get very upset. We have to keep the nerds happy. We do. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't. I, I feel like I, I feel like I'm getting myself in trouble by making fun no. of nerds because they pay the bills. 
Yeah, it's you know, I'm not at a, a point in my success where I can pick and choose who is a fan of me or not. I just I feel like I gotta I like everybody who likes me. Me too. I don't know. I'm just uh, me- listen, any nerds who are listening and offended, I'm just I'm saying this because I love you guys, I care about you, I'm trying to help. You know, it's it's tough love. I'm telling you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. You know, I'm a couple years older than most of them. I'm just I'm just imagine imagine I'm putting my arm around you, you know, after the little league game where you just struck out and I say, listen, champ, it's OK. You know, today just, today wasn't your game, but we're going to get through this together. And uh, there's just a couple things I need you to work on. You know, your stance, your grip, you know. Just a couple things I needed to work on, but we're going to get through this together. <laughs> Do you know if Mark McGrath still gets upset by being called sugar gay? No. If you go look at his Twitter profile right now, his uh, pinned tweet says sugar gay all day. Because there was a viral video of a kid calling him sugar gay and he flipped out on him. So I'll choke your fucking face. Wow. Taze your nipples. Can, can you have an autograph? Yeah, if you'll beat the shit out of that guy. I He's still don't know right what now. the story was. Mark? Oh my God. I have more Twitter followers than the Mark McGrath. That's Do crazy. You? Yeah. Unless this is not him. No, that's him. Sugar gay all day. See? All right. He's embraced it for pride month. Oh no, this was August. Well, see, he, the, 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 he's got to do, uh, he's got to do like every corporation and just have, uh, the pride flag up during the month of June and then July 1st poof disappears. Oh yeah. Well, now you get extra points if you keep the the gay flag up all year round. Mm, Because uh, that means you really care about gay people. Yeah. If you put it in your Twitter bio, homophobia ended. Thanks to Starbucks putting the fucking rainbow flag in their Twitter bio. Thank you. That, that did solve a lot. Okay, here we go. Oh my God. Mark McGrath flips that on teen who, who calls him sugar gay. This was only two years ago. No, no, this... it's an old video. Okay, okay. So maybe it was a repost. Yeah. Oh, gentlemen, make a hole. Move it. Make a hole. Who okay. said sugar gay? I'm in your fucking ass. Who said that? You said that? No, I didn't say anything. You want to be smart? Oh yeah. my God. Did I say anything? Did you say something? No, I did not say anything. Choke your fucking say. head. Oh. Choke your fucking head. Hey, Mark, can I get your autograph no, no. Oh, man. No, you can't. You can't. All right, cool. You beat the fuck out of that guy right there. Yeah. Tomorrow. The one that oh, my God. Do this, Choke your fucking face. You say that again. I can't tell. It's, it's some combination of him, like, fucking around slash being on a bunch of coke. And I can't tell. I, I don't know what's going on, but I love it. One of the best we're moments gonna, in culture. We're going to blame the, the coke for Hold on, he didn't finish his autograph. I mean, that's what I'm oh feeling. Oh, God. Look how close. Why do you have to get that close? That was my smart ass. Fucking hurt you, motherfucker. Like, oh, beat the fuck out of you. What? But he's also, I mean, he says such weird shit that he's like, I'll tweak your nipples, bro. Like, right. there's no it's way that he's shit. serious. Choke your fucking face. You know that? Yeah. Yeah. Are you done? Yeah, you're done. How old is that kid? Close your eye. Because these guys got some sad. <laughs> you choke ass bitch. You'll never make it in this yeah. business. Whoa. You're fucking, you know. you done? He, wow. Right there, yeah, right there. So I'll tweak your nipples. I'll, I'll tweak your nipples. I'll tweak your nipples. I'll tweak your nipples. Wow. Do you, do you want some meat? So like, he's got to be fucking face? around a little bit, you know? But I, I can't tell. Yeah, I heard you say something. I can't tell how serious he is. Yeah, this is not a typical response. You go home and get I mean, the kid is fucking with him too, and like, I, I, I feel like, I feel like he's sort of playing a bit. Okay. But I think he's probably also high or something. I don't know, but devastatingly handsome. I mean, that man yeah, is a ten. Too much. Yeah, he keeps smirking. He was the hottest dude for a time. Was excuse me, Chrissy. <laughs> I haven't seen a recent photo of him. Is he still? Is he still a heartthrob? I mean, he's like fifty-five or something like that. So you know, he's maybe maybe not in his prime anymore. But shout out to Mark McGrath. Shout out to Sugar shout Gay. To Mark shout out to Sugar Gay. He looks a little Norm McDonaldy now. 
Well, I hope that I look even a fraction as beautiful as Mark McGrath when I'm his age. That's all I have to say. We should all be wow, so this, lucky. This really goes on and on. Oh, yeah. It's great. Was this after like a whole summer of him being called Sugar Gay and then he just lost it? I don't know anything about it. Okay. Other than it's majestic. He is a beautiful man. Yeah, he he, I think this is current Mark McGrath. All right. Looks I like mean, more McDonald, right? A little bit. Maybe with the, yeah. The teeth. Listen, if you're trying to get yeah. me to talk shit about my friend Mark McGrath, oh. not going to fucking happen. All right, Missy? He's not a good happening. Looking, he's a good looking man. A beautiful man. Great. Statuesque. <laughs> Just a specimen. Yeah. How about Mario Lopez? Eh. That guy's. I don't know. Like, I don't. He's like fucking 52. Looks amazing. I don't, I don't like a classically pretty man. I, I'm uh, I'm a fan of Mario Lopez, Mark Consuelos, you know, like a an older man with a darker complexion. It just uh, I don't like a man who looks like he's got a better skin regime than I do. Fair, fair. I just feel like I would be so safe in his strong arms. Uh, you know, his he was soft. Uh, he looks like he has extremely soft hands. He does. Um. He was a, uh, a a pretty good wrestler in high school, I believe, and uh, has done boxing for a long time. And uh, there was a guy that I uh, talked to years ago that did MMA with him and got knocked out by uh, Mario Lopez in the gym. Whoa. Okay. I would say. I enjoyed him on Saved by the Bell. He was great. Still is great. Let's see. Do you like this picture of him? <laughs> He has lipstick, I think. <laughs> Listen, that's that's what the that's what the people are doing these days. Ugh, no, not okay. He's too pretty for me. Well, you know, so what? Were you more of like a uh, what are you into, like Post Malone or something? No, doesn't Post Malone have tattoos? Yeah, I like attractive with an edge, like a little something else going mm, on. Okay, yeah. Maybe a face tattoo or a or a nice butt from uh, high school baseball, you know, like, something a little extra. So like like present day Justin Bieber. Ooh, what does he look like? With the tattoo, gorgeous. He, that's he looks like a fucking no, ten. That's what he looks like. I don't I don't want an MK Ultra leftover. I don't need a brainwashed celeb. No, he's too like stringy and. Mm. No, he looks like he's done drugs. I think he's done a lot of drugs. Yeah. No, he's like lived. He's lived too much life for me. Mm, fair enough. Imagine, imagine thinking that Justin Bieber is too edgy for you. <laughs> oh, I don't like Justin Bieber. He's too edgy. He's, I don't know. I think he's just seen a lot. I think he's probably been like sexually abused by the industry. I just, I feel like that's a lot, a lot to unpack. Yeah, I think he's yeah probably probably seen a lot of you know that guy. Uh, have you heard of that guy Dan Schneider from uh, Nickelodeon? Mm, no, he produced a lot of those like kids shows in like the nineties and two thousands. I was a little bit too old to ever see those, like the ones that Ariana Grande was on and stuff. And oh, uh, see, we didn't have cable or Nickelodeon, so all of this like eluded me. Yeah, I, I was too old for it, so I'm just finding out about this stuff now. But apparently, there's all these like really gross references of like making the girls show their feet and stuff like in the shows. This Dan Schneider. Ugh. I, I don't know what he looks like, but probably so. Yeah. Did you show this guy. guy your feet? Nope. Yeah. Well, Hey, if you want to be on TV, you will. Ugh. I show my feet for free, like almost weekly here. I keep trying. I tell everyone on Twitch if, uh, you know, donate 20 bucks and I'll show you the soles of my feet. I, I haven't gotten any any takers yet. I feel there must be a bug or I don't know. It's just I, I can't imagine that there's a lack of demand, but maybe, mm. maybe it's possible. Oh, we got a big neurotic raid in the chat. A lot of people came in watching the show from Neurotics channel. Remember those nerds that we were that uh, -oh. uh that, that Finn was making fun of earlier? They're have, all here in hey, the chat. Have, have I told anybody lately how much I love Marvel and Pokemon? Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> and um and, and and playing Minecraft in my pajamas while I'm eating cereal for dinner. 
Okay, the cereal for dinner, I do have a problem with. I've never supported cereal uh, after dark. How I, dare I you even... judge our people, Chrissy? How dare you? Ugh, no, cereal is like, that's a lazy, that, that's peak laziness. Well, that's the world we live in. Okay. This is, I, I mean... just feel bad for any woman, you know, in her, say, like, single woman in, say, her late 20s, early 30s, that, like, you know, this is the dating pool. It's got to be rough. You got to know where to look. I I think uh, any you have to just know where to look. I, I think you can't be lazy about where you look for guys. I think people that complain about not being able to find somebody to date, it's like you have to know what your values are and then, okay, then where are the people that have those values or qualities? You can be like, oh, yeah. I want to meet a funny guy, but then you never set foot in a comedy club or so people are just stupid. It's like you can't just. You can't be lazy about it. Well, you know, it's like a lot of men that I talk to, um, you know, say they want, uh, you know, whatever, some like, you know, they want to settle down and meet somebody nice and get married or something. But meanwhile, you know, all the girls they're interested in are these edgy girls with bangs and tattoos. And, you know, it's like, well, do, do you think that's wife material? You think the guy, the girl with the face tattoo and the fucking turf bangs, you think she's going to turf bangs? <laughs> <laughs> you think that's your future wife? You sure about that, buddy? You yeah, want to go arm on that one? I am getting married, Noodle Hat. Oh yeah, I'm in, I'm very much engaged. We're just we're talking about this for everyone else's benefit. Yeah, I'm I'm married. Yeah, this is the taken crew. It doesn't stop me from you know I I still have my eye out if the right guy comes along you know. We could consider will, opening up our relationship. You'll open up your heart and your butthole for the right man. I mean, I'll consider it. Mm -hmm. You always keep a bottle of poppers just in case. Ew. Sorry. <laughs> what? I I, I've heard I people know. talking about poppers since like the 90s. And I've done a lot of drugs. I don't know what those are, though. Do you? I think it's called amyl nitrates. Yeah. And you smell them and it makes your butthole go. Ah! So is it like a, a thing that you pop or something? Or no, what, you what smell it? it. You smell it. I mean, what? But it's not like powder or what is it? It comes in a little thing. No, I think it's, I guess it's a liquid. Oh. I've only it... seen them once. Uh, and it's just like a little, like smelling salts, but for your asshole. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, hey, listen, I'm just glad that uh, this is, <laughs> I'm glad that Big Pharma exists. See, listen, you were talking all this shit about Big Pharma earlier, but where else would we get smelling salts for your asshole? I think just, you know, do it the old natural way, just by mm. hard, just by elbow grease, you know, just roll <laughs> up your sleeves and and get it. Go about it how our parents did it. I don't That's know. right. Back in World War Two, we didn't need poppers to open up our buttholes. <laughs> just a little bacon grease. We didn't have that during the war. That's right. That's how it's going to be in this next recession uh, when there's like actual starvation and things are hard to come by. I hope it's a character building for people. And all these guys that sat around getting soft, eating cereal for dinner, just uh, that's going to be our food. You should be hoarding meat right now in your second freezer mm -hmm. and uh, getting jacked. All these uh, cereal eating Pokemon collectors, that's going to be our, <laughs> our, our, our slaves and our food when the shit goes down. Oh, I'll just no. have a collection of them. Like, you know, Mr. Burns from The Simpsons, how he had a bunch of those dogs like on chains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll just have a bunch of those guys, all the, oh, right. the soy jacks that can't see without their glasses walking around on all fours on a chain. None of those people watch this show. We have all chads, all chads That's in right. the chat. That's right. Nothing, nothing but Pokemon chads in the chat today. <laughs> have I mentioned how much I love comic books? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> pander, Finn, pander, pander. Where, where can people find you and follow you? What's coming up? What are you working on? Other uh, than an offspring. That's right. Not the band, but I, a person. I've I've laid my seed. Your um, seed. Yeah, in my in my my trad wife. Um, so that's that's cooking coming in May. Uh other than that, you can if you just search for my name, Finn McKenty, you can find me pretty much anywhere, you know, YouTube, Twitch, whatever. Uh so do that. Um, yeah, my my mission just uh as a former, as a as a recovering soy jack. My mission is to help all of you current soy jacks um, 
save yourselves from yourselves. That's my mission. Okay. That's very kind of you. Um, Finn, you're the best. You're so fun to talk to. I love your content. I love your videos. You're very good at what you do. Everyone follow Finn on his two YouTube channels, the punk rock MBA and Finn McKenty PR MBA and on Twitter at the punk rock MBA. This there it is. Fun. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. There's the singing. You're the best. Thank you to the chat for all your comments and questions. This was fun guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.